The latest CNN poll has Donald Trump beating Hillary Clinton 45% to 43%. But the good news is the staffer who informed Hillary is expected to make a full recovery. <laughs> Hillary Clinton had a rough time campaigning this weekend. <coughs> I've been talking so... <coughs> That's a lot of coughing. I, uh... Yet another Hillary Clinton hacking scandal. A quick... <laughs> Quick note of advice, if people are questioning your health, madam, and you've got a terrible cough, don't do it straight into the mic. <laughs> but Hillary Clinton did have a nice recovery. <coughs> Every time I think about Trump, I get allergic. Yeah, she gets allergic, which is bad news, because not even Hillary can afford an EpiPen. <laughs> Yesterday in China, President Obama had a meeting with Vladimir Putin. And before they started, Obama texted Michelle going into a meeting, love you. Well, Putin texted the same thing to Donald Trump. Isn't that, isn't that weird? Isn't that wow. Love you, kiss your face. On Saturday, Trump visited a black church in Detroit. Donald Trump swaying to the music this weekend at an African-American church in Detroit, reaching out for new support. No, no, no. You know what? I'm sorry. I've got to call out the media on this one. Donald Trump was not swaying to the music. He was swaying. And there happened to be music playing at the same time. The two happened completely independently of each other. That was not happening with the music. That was not with the music. Watch Ben Carson, by the way, here, because while Trump is being carried away by the Holy Spirit, Ben Carson is on his phone <laughs> tapping away, trying to catch a Pokemon or something. I don't know. He explained later he was actually texting God to let him know what was going on. <laughs> you know, a lot of has been made of what a gift to comedy and to comedians Donald Trump has been, but I feel like Ben Carson, if we'd had a chance to get to know him a little better, he might have been number one. In order for our country to be great again, uh, every aspect has to be great, including our inner cities. Mm. And, and we just saw Mr. Trump here. I asked him, how did it go? And he said, great. And he said he learned a lot of things. What do you think he took oh, away from, from my, today? My luggage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Looks like Dr. Carson is going to try and find his luggage and be right back with us. Amazing. That's how everyone should end every interview. And headlines and punchlines there. A look at what the late night leftists who uh, offer a few jokes we're talking about as we welcome you back to America Talks and your chance to talk to us at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Let's continue our conversation by bringing back from Newsmax Washington my former congressional colleague, Michael Patrick Flanagan. Of course, Michael's now the president of Flanagan Consulting and is an enthusiastic blogger. So it's good to have him. Thanks for sticking around, Michael. Tell you what, let's go right to our phones at 1-877-NEWSMAX from Arizona. Kathy is on the line. Kathy, do the talking here on America Talks. Well, hey, J.D., how you doing? Doing fine. Appreciate you calling in, I believe, from Phoenix and its environs today. Yes, sir. I, I just hate, I, I just don't like Hillary Clinton, and I, I'm scared that she... And her husband are going to steal the election. And, you know, and I know, you know, I, I know uh, the Mr. Flanagan there. Uh, he um, he's from Chicago, and and they steal elections there. And I'm just scared it's going to happen to us. You know, it's interesting you should mention that, Kathy, because not only do we have the Chicago way, but our friends at Judicial Watch have a story this morning. Here's the headline: U.S. spends another ten million dollars to register new quote, immigrant voters. Now, we find out in the story from Judicial Watch that the Obama administration's already spent 19 million registering these folks. And it's kind of interesting, when you look at the states, they're, uh, they're highlighting here, California, New York, Florida, Ohio. Hey, wait a minute, Michael Patrick Flanagan. Sounds to me why we got a campaign going. Maybe Kathy's instincts are... Uh, are right on target here. Quote, new immigrant voters in California, the way the new law is written, that means illegals, does it not? No, it means new immigrants. 
Now, <laughs> where they come from or how they are, you know, new immigrants means new immigrants. You've got to stay with the Chicago guys and listen to every word. The, the, that article, by the way, you mentioned, went on to mention that, that a grand total of $68 million has been spent on these various programs, much of it directed by the former director of La Raza, and it's grant money that's not even spent by the government. This is money that's given away by the government to other groups to get them registered, groups like La Raza. And the article went on to observe that virtually every department of the administration, the Department of Labor, the Department of Homeland Security, and others are involved in this full-out effort to get this done. This is the Chicago way. Government exists to perpetuate the regime in power, period. That's its only function. And this government has been perverted to make sure that the Democrats remain in power at all costs, whether it's James Comey or whether it's uh, Jay Johnson wanting to take over the elections or whether it's DOL and others trying to register anyone who will sit still long enough and sign their name. It, this, is, this is the new function of the administration. And you mentioned in that cavalcade of less than heroic and exemplary characters, Jay rhymes with meh, Johnson, over the Department of Homeland Security, who continues to talk about identifying the election apparatus in our several states as, quote, critical infrastructure that Homeland Security will, quote, protect. The Chicago way would be to protect it by making sure the ballot boxes are stuffed. Is that, uh, is that so far afield it's not realistic, or is that right on target, Mike? I, I for now and in the future, perhaps, for this particular election, I, I don't see how they do it technically. I don't see how they capably do it. It would require a zillion dollars. Congress would have to write the check. I don't see them doing that. But more importantly, the ballots are printed. In Illinois, for example, the ballot is settled 90 days out from the election. That ballot is settled. Uh, Illinois will run their own election. I don't see how the government could, could functionally take it over. But even if they tried to, even if they attempted to, even blue states would get up on their hind legs and say, no, you're not. You're not touching our elections. Uh, so I, I don't see that this happening for November. But setting, laying the groundwork for this in the future so Hillary's reelect is settled as an issue in Washington rather than 50 state capitals, yeah, I can see us moving in that direction. Well, let's move in the direction of another phone call. The name of the program, America Talks. And we'll go ahead and broaden that to include the entire North American continent. If you're in Detroit, you look south into Canada, uh, Windsor, Ontario is where Rick is calling in across the sovereign border. Rick, there in the Windsor, Detroit area on the Canadian side, thanks for calling in on America Talks. Hi, Rick, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go right ahead, sir. Okay. For that 9-11, when Mr. Trump said these Muslims in New Jersey were cheering, and laughing and putting up their hands and signs of victory. I seen that. You saw it firsthand. And where where did you see that? Did you see something in your area? We hear about the population of the Detroit area. And uh, was it up there? Or were you talking about what was going on in New Jersey in terms of the video there? Well, I seen, I, I seen it on TV in Windsor. Okay, so okay. you saw and you remember that. Okay, fair enough. Let me ask you a question. Since you're across the line in Windsor, I don't know if you spend much time in uh, areas uh, north of there in the United States, given that peculiar geography of Windsor, Detroit. Uh, much has been made or concern has been voiced about the, uh, the burgeoning uh, Arab American communities around Detroit. Should we in the United States be concerned about those communities, in your opinion, Rick? Well, I... Prime Minister, after he got reelected, confessed that he's a Muslim. We'll okay. have to check that, Rick. I appreciate your call, but uh, the fact that young Mr. Trudeau is now the Prime Minister, I don't know about his public confession of, uh, of becoming uh, an adherent of Islam. I do know that in terms of Canadian television, there was a program on the air described as Little Mosque on the Prairie. A, fall, a far cry from Little House on the Prairie here in the United States. Michael Patrick Flanagan, tonight, NBC, which I guess stands for no one but Clinton, has a uh, commander-in-chief forum. How tough will it be tonight for Donald Trump 
in that uh, joint appearance, which is not a debate. 30 seconds. Hillary has no platform to run on, so he can throw whatever he wants at her, and it'll stick. She has, no one thinks that there, no one can make a positive case for her to be president, and foreign policy is her strongest suit, as weak as that is. So I, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to actually expose the relative strengths of both and to show her for having very little strength at all in this area. Michael Patrick Flanagan, proud former congressman from the state of Illinois and member of the class of 1994 on Capitol Hill, my classmate, sir, as always, you have our thanks. Look forward to having you back real soon. Now, when we come back, thanks a bunch, pal. When we come back, David Scranton on the economy. David uh, has some thoughts about how this election may affect or not affect the economy. And as always, more of your calls, and some of them are quite interesting, at 1-877-NEWSMAX. It's America Talks here on Newsmax TV.